All right, memory leaks and dangling pointers. So in all of the previous examples, uh, the code worked perfectly. Uh, whenever we allocated something dynamically, we were very careful to deallocate it. And we always had pointers that pointed to some object. Well, when you're writing a complex program, you're going to make mistakes. And so generally, this is going to be in the form of a memory leak or a dangling pointer. And the screencast will show you um, how to track these things down. I'm just going to describe conceptually what's happening here. So a memory leak just occurs when you leave a dynamically allocated object in memory. So let's say, for example, I've got a block and I create a dynamically allocated object and out in memory I get something that looks like this and if we don't delete this integer 5 by the end of the block what happens is because this pointer is stat statically allocated then it is deallocated, but the integer 5 remains in memory. Now, if your program does this enough, and of course, you know, the, the program may not terminate with this block. This could be a block that we call over and over and over again. And every single time this block e executes, you're going to leave an integer in memory. So if, you're, if your program does this enough, it'll eventually run out of memory and crash. So we call that a memory leak. That's one example if we were to leave this. And of course, to fix this, for every new, there must be a corresponding delete. And somewhere, uh, either in this block or during program execution, we have to have a delete statement that deallocates the object that the pointer points to. So in this case, 5 will be destructed. And then when we leave the scope of this block, the statically allocated pointer IP will be deallocated. And so there, we're not leaving anything in memory. One of the things that we can do, and this is an advantage of pointers, is that we can reuse them. So let's say, for example, I have a similar setup where I dynamically allocate the integer 5. And then somewhere later in the block, I reuse int pointer IP. Now what's going to happen in this case, we're going to allocate space for a new integer and store 10 in that location. And then the new operator is going to return the address and set it equal to IP. What's going to happen in this case is, again, 5 will be left in memory, and the new address stored in IP will point to 10. We've lost our ability to refer to this memory address, so we can't delete it. This is the kind of thing we want to be able to do, but we either have to have another pointer on 5, or before we dynamically allocate new memory, and assign that address to IP here, we have to delete IP. Then what would have happened is 5 would have been deallocated. Then we would have stored the new address in IP, which points to 10. And at some point before the block ends, we would expect to see another delete. When that happens, the integer 10 is deallocated. When we leave the block in which IP is statically declared, then it will be deallocated. What makes things complicated is these deletes may not occur within this block. They just occur at some point during program execution. Nonetheless, if we don't have a corresponding delete for every new, you're going to leave integers and other objects in memory. So a dangling pointer is a little different. A 
And let me just make one more point. One of the tricky things about memory leaks is, you know, if you're leaving a little bit of memory that's uh, not deallocated, if you're leaving some objects in memory, it may not actually cause the program to crash. And certainly during testing, you, you may not notice that this uh, is going on, and that's one of the reasons you uh, need to use these tools to detect memory leaks, and we'll see how to do that in the screencast. Dangling pointers, on the other hand, can often result in, in a crash, and, and of course when that happens, you know uh, that something is wrong. And what this is is the pointer exists, it should point to some object, but it actually doesn't. And oftentimes what happens is if you try to call a method of that object, that's when you get a crash. And I'm just going to simulate a dangling pointer here. So let's say that I have a class object, one of our Cartesian points again. and I call the print method, and then at some point I delete the object. So this code is going to work perfectly fine, and you know we have something that looks like this, and of course when we call the print method, we're going to print the Cartesian coordinate 3, 4. To simulate a dangling pointer, I am going to assign P to null. Now what this does is even though this is a pointer to a point object and even though I have created a point object, by assigning this to null I've effectively created a, a dangling pointer. Now when, I try, when the program tries to invoke the print method this is going to crash. And you'll see that in the screencast. And I'll show you a tool to determine where this occurs. Now, it will tell you where the program crashed. It doesn't necessarily tell you, um, you know, at which point the pointer stopped pointing at a correct object. That's uh, where you need to use a little detective work. Not only does this create a, a, a dangling pointer, this also is going to create a memory leak because now, I, by, by virtue of this assignment, I um, can no longer access this memory where the point is. So that's a dangling pointer where you have a pointer, you think it points to some object, but it doesn't. And where this is going to come about is when you've got a complicated program and you're manipulating these pointers and you know the program is going to do something that uh, you weren't expecting.